Hello everyone, welcome back to Noteworthy ENT. We are going to learn about adenoid or nasopharyngeal tonsil in this lecture. So adenoid, it was described as nasopharyngeal lymphoid aggregate or Lushka's tonsil by Santorini. And this term adenoid, it was given by Wilhelm Mayer. Now this adenoid, as I have already discussed in the anatomy of nasopharynx lecture, it is found at the roof and posterior wall of the nasopharynx and it also forms the upper part of Waldeus ring of lymphoid tissue. Now what is this Waldeus ring? This Waldeus ring is the ring of lymphoid tissue located at the nasopharynx and oropharynx that is at the entrance of upper aerodigestive tract. Now this consists of Superiorly the pharyngeal tonsil or the adenoids, inferiorly the lingual tonsils and laterally the tubal tonsil that is the tonsil around the eustachian tube area and the palatine tonsils. So adenoids, tubal tonsils, palatine tonsil and lingual tonsils they form a ring at the upper aerodigestive tract and this ring is known as Waldeyer's ring. Now in early childhood this adenoid it forms the first site of immunological contact of inhaled antigens. Now coming to the development of adenoid. Now adenoid tissue can be identified at 4 to 6 week of gestational period lying in the roof and posterior wall of nasopharynx. And by the age of third month it is clearly identifiable. Now, as with all lymphoid tissue, growth continues rapidly during infancy and plateaus between 2 and 14 years of age. And after that, that is after the age of around 15 years, there is regression in most of the children. And adenoid, again as with most of the lymphoid tissue, attains its largest size at around 5 to 7 years of age. Now, adenoid. In contrast to palatine tonsils, it has no crypts and no capsule and it is covered by stratified squamous epithelium and it receives a rich arterial supply from the branches of facial artery, maxillary artery and the thyrocervical trunk and lymphatic drainage to retropharyngeal lymph nodes and the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. Now let us discuss the immune function of adenoid. So lymphoid tissue of the Waldeyer's ring, they help in producing antibodies and adenoid, it produces B cells which gives rise to IgG and IgA antibodies. Now this exposure of antigens via mouth and nose in early childhood is an important part of acquired immunity. And this adenoid appears to have an important role in the development of immunological memory, especially in younger children. Now coming to adenoid hypertrophy and its pathological effects. Now you see the pathological effects of adenoid hypertrophy will be mainly on the ear and on the nose. So the manifestation in the ear can be otitis media with effusion, with the reasons being the most obvious one being anatomical obstruction of the eustachian tube orifice and also due to recurrent acute or chronic inflammation of adenoid which increases the bacterial load especially that of H influenzae and it leads to a decreased mucociliary clearance. Also ear related can be recurrent attacks of acute otitis media. The other manifestations being the upper airway obstruction and sleep disordered breathing that is due to the mechanical obstruction caused by the hypertrophy. Then the rhinosinusitis. In childhood, adenoid is implicated in rhinosinusitis acting as a reservoir for pathogenic bacteria. It has also been implicated in reduction of olfaction sensitivity and it has been seen to be improved after adenoidectomy. Some rare instances of neoplasia of adenoid that is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma have also been reported which are commonly seen when there is 
asymmetrical and atypical enlargement of tonsils and lymph nodes in the absence of infection. Now coming to the clinical history, special attention has to be paid to the symptoms of middle ear disease and nasal obstruction. In the middle ear, the common manifestations being the otitis media with diffusion and acute otitis media. Now when there is otitis media with diffusion, the patient usually presents with a conductive hearing loss which is diagnosed with the help of otoscopy and also we can get a pure tone audiometry along with impedance audiometry done. I have made separate lectures on both these topics you can check them out. In cases of acute otitis media the patient may have fever, pain in the ear and fullness in the ear which may be followed by discharge also. Now a family history of atopy should be also inquired as the clinical implications between allergic rhinitis and adenoid hypertrophy have been well documented. Now coming to the clinical examination. The first thing you will notice about the patient in persistent adenoid hypertrophy is adenoid facies. And this is the atypical appearance of facial features which result from persistent adenoid hypertrophy and it is also known as long face syndrome. As you can see in this picture, the patient will have a long lean face with an open mouth due to persistent nasal obstruction, high arched palate, underdeveloped maxilla, short upper lip, elevated and pinched in nose with overcrowding of upper front teeth. Now these are the common features we will see in a patient with adenoid facies. Now further down the management what we will do is we can do a nasal endoscopy which is highly accurate to assess the size of the adenoids. As you can see in this diagram this is the enlarged part of the adenoid. Now this is the endoscopic grading which was given by Clemens et al. and it describes the relation of the enlargement of adenoid with the coena. So in grade 1 the adenoid fills the one third of the vertical portion of the coena. In grade 2 it is one third to two third. In grade 3 from 2 third to near complete obstruction and in grade 4 there is complete coenal obstruction. So as you can see this be grade 3. Now in cases when the patient is not cooperative or performing an endoscopy is not feasible we can get a lateral soft tissue radiograph of the nasopharynx stun. It is also reasonably accurate to determine the adenoid size. Now again there are various systems to classify the hypertrophy of adenoid on a lateral radiograph this being the adenoid. So what we do basically is compare the size of the adenoid with that of the nasopharyngeal airway and grade 1 being when adenoid is occupying up to one third of the airway grade 2 being one third to two third grade 3 being near complete obstruction and grade 4 being complete obstruction. So complete obstruction being when the adenoid is touching the soft palate area. Now coming to the treatment part, the treatment can be done medically as well as surgically. Traditionally adenoidectomy was supposed to be the only treatment for the adenoid enlargement. However, there have been good amount of evidence that intranasal steroid in the form of fluticasone or mometasone are helpful and also we can use antihistamines as there is good amount of evidence implicating allergic rhinitis with adenoid hypertrophy and also we can use leukotriene receptor antagonist that is Montelukast or Zafirlukast. Also in cases of acute infections antibiotics can also be used. I will be making a detailed video on adenoidectomy soon. So if you have any questions or any feedback please write to me in the comment section below and if you like the video please subscribe to the channel and share it with your colleagues. Thank you.